Joining us to discuss this is communication, to discuss the communication gap similarly between the government and the protesters is Tolu Lokpe Oloru Dero, a public relations consultant. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. What is your assessment of the president's broadcast over the NTAS protest as a PR professional? Uh, I think there were very um, many glaring gaps. I think that the crux of the matter was not addressed. Um, and I personally felt that it was, it's like we were asking A and it was telling us Z. So th there was no, there was no um, synergy between what was happening on ground, the reality of, um, of the protests and what the president said to us last night. What can be done or what should be done at this stage to bridge the seeming communication gap? Well, the first thing is, I think that communication must be continuous, right? So I was one of those who had believed that if the president had spoken, either on day one or day two of the protest, we likely would not have gotten to this point where we are today, right? But by day 10, I, I already from assessment of the situation, the, the president just coming out to speak at that time would really not have, um, would really not have calmed the nerves of, of the protesters or anybody really across Nigeria. So I, I think it was quite belated, but now we are where we are now. I think that one of the tools that we can use to, to ensure that everybody is at least on the same page and um, tempers are afraid, people are calm, First of all, must be an acknowledgement of the Lekki massacre. We can't do it. It looks like there's a deliberate attempt to wipe off the entire experience on that Tuesday night. And we saw it. We watched it live. So um, it's really not possible for anyone to try to wipe it off our minds by not talking about it or by not acknowledging. I think that's even another reason why there's so much anger in the polity till now. There's obviously an attempt to, to wipe off that incident, but we cannot forget. We watched people die on Instagram Live and you can't just wipe that off, off my memory. So I think the first thing is acknowledge that people died in Lekki, is find out who gave that order and then continuously engage the public. We cannot afford for um, speeches to be read to us every 14 days or once in three months or once in a year. While we think that there were some steps that the governor of Lagos State didn't take right, I think that his template is something that some people may choose to follow. In terms of communication now, he's always talking. He's always saying something. He's tweeting. He's on the TV. He's um, everywhere just saying something. We saw him on ground during the protest. We saw him um, on TV just after the Lekki massacre, I think that it's important that, pe that we continue to engage people. Of course, the substance of what they say <laughs> is another matter entirely, right? But then you must continue to speak to people and engage them. And this is not just about the executive arm of government. Our legislators also must speak. They've been unknowingly quiet since this started. Yes, some pockets have spoken, but there must be continuous engagement of their constituents and uh, members of the general public. From a PR perspective, how would you assess the handling of the crisis generally so far by the federal government? I think it's been it's been poor. It's it's been um, it's, it's been poor for, for, for me to um, temper my words. I, I think that it's not been handled properly. I think that. Um, the situation was not properly assessed by their crisis managers. Otherwise, um, they would have known that this issue would have escalated. There were quite a number of times when people called out on social media that the president should speak to the country, right? And that people did not want proxies. Nobody um, elected the inspector general of police, right? Nobody um, elected these chick, um, security chiefs. We elected the president of Nigeria and the president of Nigeria. We elected, we elected our members of, of the legislature and we expect that these people should continue to speak to us. 
All right, news just reaching us as former heads of states are meeting the president over this crisis. Uh, the question is, what impact do you think this meeting and these men will have to quell or quench the anger? I don't expect anything different, really. The fundamental problem is all the people who are meeting with the president are not representative of the people who are agitating, right? They are these people, for want of a better word, are old. They are not the ones who are being killed on the streets. They are not the ones who were shot during a peaceful protest where people sat in. They are not the ones. So if I hear, for example, that all oh, some youths have visited the president, perhaps I would expect some form of um, intelligent outcome from that meeting. But I'm sorry, um, the people who have continued to meet with the president, it doesn't seem like there's any fruitful um, pro um, proceed that will come out from such engagement. We've seen the Senate president meet with the um, president. We've seen the um, lead for the House of Representatives meet with them. And they all came out and said the same thing. Everybody keeps begging the protesters. And I don't understand why. The, the protests were peaceful until external elements invaded it, okay? And there is no evidence that anything is being done. So I, I, I'm, it's quite um, surprising and worrisome that people keep talking to the protesters to say be peaceful. The protests have been peaceful, okay? They should be talking to the arms of government who have been deployed to rise against the citizens of Nigeria. Right, we've seen some. Former heads of states, former military heads of states. I'm not sure that there is anything that will be different from what we've seen so far. Okay, but, but in, in recent days, we've seen some of videos showing some officers, military officers, relating peacefully with angry youths at some point, um, even being able to use dialogue, conversation to discuss exactly. um, these youths. How strategic uh, should this uh, be in the communication going forward? Well, so that's that's what I said the other time about continuous engagement. So you must be able to read the room, right? We've seen videos where um, men in, in um, army uniform were um, speaking with the youths and engaging them, right, to explain to them and express that they understand what their challenges have been. So I, I think that that's a good strategy for, for um, our military personnel, including members of the government as well, to continually engage the people. You can't come out with force, with full force or a show of force to say that um, you want to speak with the people. Nobody's going to believe you. You must show that you first understand the plight of these people before you then try to speak with them. There must be a connection first. And that's what I think is critical and has been lacking so far. Tolulokwe Olon Rudero, thank you very much for joining us on the news. Okay, I, I don't think she heard me, but we're grateful for your time and your thoughts.